our group decided to tackle state monads in Scala. This is a pretty difficult concept to understand, but I hope by the end of this we will have a better grasp on exactly what they are and what they can do for us. So what are monads anyway? The first piece of advice my programming professor gave me upon introducing monads was don't Google them. The result will confuse you so much that you won't be able to do your monads assignment. In the finest traditions of engineering, we proceed to Google them anyway. We come up with the following results. The philosophical concept of a monad, a single, indivisible, and ultimately simple entity, such as an atom or a person. The outdated definition from biology, a flagellate protozoan. The mystical idea, the totality of all being. And finally, for no discernible reason, a type of burrito. We managed to make all these definitions except the protozoan fit in one way or another. Monads in functional programming are, in a sense, a single indivisible entity. After attempting to wrap our heads around them for a couple of weeks, they felt like the totality of all being, and we'll get to the burrito in a bit. Okay, now what are they in terms of functional programming? Monads are, in a way, wrappers. They are objects that store a function called a doer and chain them together. This chain of doers is usually built step by step. Monads have two general functions used for this, apply and flat map, as they are called in Scala. Flat map is used to chain more operations, doers, into the monads. Once all the operations have been chained, apply is used to actually perform the stored operations. A monad is also a type constructor, so when you're using them, you will be assigning things to the type defined by that monad. An interesting analogy for understanding how to approach programming with monads versus regular programming is understanding the difference between arithmetic and algebra. Arithmetic is like regular code. You have an equation, 2 plus 2, and you solve it to get the answer, 4. In an algebraic expression, however, you don't solve it immediately to get your answer. You rearrange variables into a different expression, and then you plug in numbers from the variable in the new expression to solve it. The operations you can chain together in a monad work the same way, where instead of directly performing operations, you build up a new structure of doers and then evaluate it with a call to apply. So, I hear you say, a monad is just a wrapper for a function. Time to take the rest of the day off, to which I reply, not exactly. See, there's a crucial difference here. If you were to write a class with a private function in it, you'd need to have the function written at compile time statically. You wouldn't be able to modify the function at all. That would defeat the purpose of a monad, which is to encapsulate a series of computations that get created during the program's execution dynamically. See, monads are more like onions. You build them from the center out in layers, adding one computation to the doer at a time during the program's execution. So there are many different types of monads out there, but as with the title of this presentation, we will be focusing on state monads. A state monad records an internal state, which could be anything from a memory map object to a simple integer. What matters is that when operations are chained together in a state monad, the state is passed from one doer to the next. The doer in a state monad therefore needs to take a state and return a state along with its result. Importantly, only the apply function takes a state. When you are building up the list of doers, you don't need to use a state at all. In Scala, a state monad has two bind functions called map and flat map. The map function takes a function f, which is used to compute the new result. The result is then wrapped in a new monad. Flat map is similar to map, but doesn't wrap the result of f in a new monad because the function f is required to return a monad already. What functions already return a monad? Map and flat map do. That's how flat map changes operations together. So to show you how to use map and flat map and how they differ, I'm going to show you this example. So as you can see here, I have a value list, which is a list that is the integers 1 through 6. Now let's say I want to write a function that multiplies that list by a number. So list multiply, which will take in an argument L, which is of type list that contains integers. So there's multiple ways that we could write this. 
um, but we're going to use map and it's fairly simple um, you take L uh, which will be the list we pass in and map to it which will take each um, node or each part and iterate through a given function so we'll call it node and apply a function where we take that node and multiply it by 2 so if we want to see this we can say val result equals list multiply list and as you can see here our result has turned into a list of the integers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 but let's say we have some list of lists so let's call this a multi-list alright so this will be a list containing multiple lists We'll assign this first list to be 1, 2, second one to be 3, 4, and the last one to be 5, 6. That way we're still kind of containing the same integers. So now let's say we want to get the same result here uh, where we take each element and we return a list of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Now we can't use this mul list multiply so we're going to have to create a different one. The reason behind that is because this is a list of ints, while this is a list of lists which contain ints. So let's create a new function called multilist multiply. Okay, and this will take a list of type list that contains list that then contains int. Okay, so again we'll use map for this, but this time it's going to differ. So here, if we were to want to write node and multiply that node times 2, we'll run into an error. Now, um, the reason why we would run into this error is because we are multiplying a list of ints times 2. So each this list times 2, and, and Scala obviously doesn't know how to do that. So instead, let's rewrite this and say inner list and map that again each one of those lists to the function as we defined it before where we take each node and we multiply that node times two so that seems to not be giving us any errors now if we take another val result of multi list let's take list multi list um, multiply and we will take our multi list and look at our result so here this doesn't look quite right we have again a list of lists but what we were wanting to do is get a list that doesn't have list and instead just has these individual values being multiplied now as you can see the values did get multiplied but we're running into this kind of issue where now we want to somehow flatten this out to just be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. To be able to do this, all we have to do is completely change this to be a flat map. Because what this allows you to do is then just get the insides of what is going on, right? So this gets the contents of 1 and 2 and maps out the, those nodes then. So it's in a way mapping it but flattening it at the same time. And this is the kind of thing that defines a monad is it has this particular function that way you can iterate and chain together different doers inside that by using multiple flat maps before you do one final map. Working our way back into state monads, let's take M1 and M2 to be state monads of type state monad. If we were to take a map of M1 onto a map of M2, we get this strange return type state monad within a state monad. Now this it happens because map returns a state monad. So when we call multiple iterations of map, each one gets wrapped into the other one that was called previous. 
Now to get around this, as I had shown, we implement flat map. So flat map puts the contents of what we wanted from map to then put into the next map. So it gets rid of that, that wrapper. It just gives us the pure contents to implement into our final map. So with a monad, this whole concept of chaining things together, we would want to chain together flat maps into one final map to get that final state monad with just all the results that we had previous. This leads us to the burrito analogy. See, I told you I'd work it in somewhere. Trying to call map multiple times is like trying to add ingredients to a burrito, but instead of just simply adding more meat and cheese, you wrap up the whole burrito in another burrito, fillings, tortilla, and all. This obviously isn't how a properly engineered burrito is designed. You want to add filling to the inside without wrapping another tortilla around the outside, in the interest of avoiding recursively nested burritos. Instead, chain calls to flat map together as many times as necessary before you call map, so that the state monad wrapper is only around one plane type doer. Taking a look back at our code, we can now fully appreciate how a list is a lot like a burrito. It's a whole bunch of elements wrapped up in one list wrapper. Here, when we called multi-list, it's a lot like creating three different burritos wrapped in one giant burrito. When we wanted to work with this and multiply it to the elements inside, we didn't want to be handed back a burrito full of burritos or lists full of lists. We wanted one solid list wrapper around each of those modified elements. To be able to do this, we implemented flat map before we called map. Now, this would also work if we were to, say, write multi more lists inside those lists which are wrapped inside the lists. And we would just continually call flat map before we get to those individual nodes that we want to work with. That way, when we are returned everything, it's just one solid list wrapping together all those modified nodes. I hope this has been beneficial to understanding how state monads in Scala work, how they chain together operations using two main functions, flat map and map, and better understanding the differences within those.